Hi, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, Ma'am Lala. Um, this is my report for Abnormal Psychology. My topic is about anxiety, trauma, and stressor-related and obsessive-compulsive and related disorders. So, for the first part, we have here the complexity of anxiety disorders. So, anxiety is a specific type of disorder, but it is more than that. It is an emotion implicated so heavily across the full range of psychopathology that our discussion implores its general nature, both biological and psychological. So, what is um, anxiety? Ba? Ah, ayan, anxiety, fear, and panic. So, anxiety is a negative mood state characterized by bodily symptoms of physical tension and by apprehension about the future. So, for example, because anxiety is difficult to study in humans, much of the research has been done with animals. So, example, there was a rat na parang sininagan nila ng, ng ilaw and then <clears throat> parang naging anxious yung, yung rat when the lights came on so di, parang nag fidget sila tremble and parang pumunta lang sila sa corner tapos parang natakot usually pag, pag natatakot ang, ano, ang animal parang pumupunta sila sa corner so Anxiety is not pleasant, so why do we seem programmed to experience it almost every time we do something important? So, what makes the situation worse is that severe anxiety usually doesn't go away. That is, even if we know there is nothing to be afraid of, we remain anxious. Uh, uh, maybe... Lahat tayo parang nakaka-experience ng ganto pero uh, we usually ano we usually experience this lalo na pag ano <laughs> pag magpapasahan na ng requirements nagkakaram na so ayun for the next we have fear is an is an immediate alarm reaction to danger like anxiety fear can be good for us it protects us by activating a massive response from the autonomic nervous system Incre increased heart rate and blood pressure for example which along with our subjective sense of terror motivates us to ex escape or possible to attack so, ayan. Next is, we have panic. It's a sudden overwhelming reaction uh, named after the Greek, Greek god Pan who terrified travelers with blood curdling screams. So, next is, we have panic attack. It's defined as an abrupt experience of intense fear or acute discomfort accompanied by physical symptoms that usually include heart palpitations, chest pain, shortness of breath, and possibly dizziness. So, parang ang anxiety, fear, and then panic attack, parang they come along together in one situation. Like, if you are anxious, nagpapanik ka, and then the next thing that happens is nagpapanik attack ka na, you can I don't know if you experience this, pero ako uh, mo, uh, hindi siya most of the time, pero I am experiencing this, it's really really hard, kasi hindi mo alam kung ano yung ano yung unahin mo <laughs> yung iniisip mo ba o yung paghinga mo so um, there are two basic types of panic attacks are described in DSM-5, expected and unexpected. So, here are the two types of panic attack. Expected or acute panic attack 
This is if you know you're afraid of high places or driving over long bridges, you might have pa you might have a panic attack. In this situations, but not anywhere else. So, um, parang if you're if you're parang ayun explain niya na. <laughs> Unexpected or uncued panic attack. If you, this is if you don't have a clue when or where the next attack will occur. Ayun. So, moving on. Causes of anxiety and related disorders. So, we have here biological con contributions. Increasing evidence shows that we inherit a tendency to be tense, uptight, and anxious. The tendency to panic also seems to run in families and probably has a genetic component that differs somewhat from genetic contributions to anxiety. Uh, anxiety is also associated with specific brain circuits and neurotransmitter, uh, neurotransmitter systems. For example, depleted levels of gamma aminobutric acid or GABA, part of the GABA ben benzodiazepine <laughs> system are associated with increased anxiety, although the relationship is not quite direct. So, next, uh, the area of the the area of the brain most often associated with anxiety is the limbic system so which acts as a mediator between the brain stem and the cortex so the uh, this circuit leads from the septal and hippocampal area in the limbic system to the frontal cortex the system that, uh, wait, the septal hippocampal system is activated by CRF and serot serotonergic and noradrenergic mediated pathways originating in the brain stem. So, the system that Gray calls the behavioral inhibition system or BIS is activated by signals from the brain stem of unexpected events such as major changes in body functioning that might signal danger so um, the late jeffrey gray pala a prominent british neuropsychologist identified a brain circuit in the limbic system of animals that seems heavily involved in anxiety and may be relevant to humans so, the BIS circuit is distinct from the circuit involved in panic. So, Gray and Graf or Grief identified the flight, the fight or flight system. You guys know what it is. So, the circuit originates in the brain, brain stem and travels through several midbrain structures, including the amygdala, the ventromedical medial nucleus of the hypothalamus and the central gray matter. When stimulated in animals, this circuit produces an immediate alarm and escape response that looks very much like in humans, very much like panic in humans. So the FFS or the fight or flight system is activated partly by deficiencies in serotonin suggested by Gray and McNaughton. So, I forgot to put this. For example, one, stud, uh, one important study suggested that cigarette smoking as a teenager is associated with greatly in increased risk for developing anxiety disorders as an adult, particularly panic disorder and generalized anxiety disorder. So, okay, yung pala yun. So, <laughs> next, psychological contributions. So, behavioral 
Behavioral theorists thought anxiety was the product of early classical conditioning, modeling, or other forms of learning. But new and accumulating evidence supports an integrated model of anxiety involving a variety of psychological factors. In childhood, we may acquire an awareness that events are not always in our control. The continuum of this perception may range from total confidence in our control of all aspects of our lives to deep uncertainty about ourselves and our ability to deal with upcoming events. If you are anxious about school, for example, you may worry you will do poorly on the next exam even though all your grades have been A's and B's or like uno or dos or uno alone. A general sense of uncontrollability may develop early as a function of upbringing and other disruptive or traumatic environment factors. So, I, uh, in addition, parents who provide a secure home base uh, provide a secure home base but allow their children to explore their world and develop the necessary skills to cope with unexpected occurrences enable their children to, de to develop a healthy sense of control. In contrast naman, uh, parents who are overprotective, uh, overprotective and overintrusive and who clear the way for their children, never letting them experience any adversity, create a situation in which children never learn how to cope with adversity when it comes along. So, yeah, you you guys know, you, you guys know secure home base man, di ba? Pero, parang, uh, some parents daw, ano, allow their children to, to explore kahit, ano, parang pinaghihigpitan, pero, yun, pinapayagan pa rin. But, there are parents also na na parang kinukulong talaga yung, yung children nila sa bahay because of yun nga, overprotective sila and then maybe from, maybe from experiences na lang of the parents that's why they're overprotective or overintrusive. Yeah. So, next. We have, oh, what? Social contributions. Um, most are social and interpersonal in nature. Marriage, divorce, difficulties at work, death of a loved one, pressures to excel in school, and so on. So, stressful life events trigger our biological and psychological uh, vulnerabilities to anxiety. So, some might be physical such as injury or illness. The same stressors can trigger physical reactions such as headaches or hypertension or emotional reac reactions such as panic attacks. The particular we, way we react to stress seems to run in families. If you get headaches when under stress, chances are other people in your family also get headaches. If you have panic attacks, other, uh, other members of your family probably do also. This finding suggests a possible genetic contribution at least to initial panic attacks. So, ayun. Depends on pala on your, ano, environment and parang na-inherit pala yun. So, parang sa akin, yung social contribution ng anxiety ko is from, <laughs> ano, parang yung, yung the way I, the way I 
I conquer my stress. Is para yun nagsustress eating ako. Napapansin ko yun. Like da, da. hindi ako aware na I am stressed. Pero once nagsustress eating na ako, like I naghahanap ako ng ng maraming pagkain. Like gusto ko silang pagsabay sa may parang gluto ni nang nangyayari. Parang dun ko na dun ko na na, na realize na I am really, really stressed. And I learned na na yung mama ko ganun din. If nasa-stress siya, nagluluto siya ng food, tapos yun. Ang daming food, naluluto, tapos kumakain siya. So maybe, just maybe, yun nga, inheritable pala siya. So, next. An integrated model. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, putting the factors in an integrated way, we have described a theory of development of anxiety called the triple vulnerability theory. So, we can see that the tendency to be uptight or high-strung might be inherited, but a generalized biological vulnerability to develop anxiety is not sufficient to produce anxiety itself. So, that is um, our that is the first generalized biological vulnerability. So, second is the generalized psychological uh, psychological vulnerability that is you might also grow up believing the world is dangerous and out of control and you might not be able to cope when things go wrong based on your early experience. If this perception is strong, you have a generalized psychological vulnerability to anxiety. So, third is the specific psychological vulnerability in which you learn in which you learn from early experience, such as being taught by your parents, that some situations or objects are fraught with danger. For example, if one of your parents is afraid of dogs or expresses anxiety about being evaluated negatively by others, you may well develop a fear of dogs or of social evaluations. Ayan. So, may contribution din pala ang, ang fears or uh, anxiety, pin, pin, pinaguhugutan ng anxiety ng parents natin or our environment. Like, pag sinab or yung pag tinuro, uh, pag the way they teach you, like, pag sinabi nila na don't go near to dogs because they're, ano, nakakatakot, nangangagat, yun. All your life, parang yung yung iisipin mo is they're really scary. Tapos kakagating like they, yun na nakakamero ka, nakakarong ka ng phobia. Ano? Phobia is parang nati trigger. Nakakaroon ka ng phobia because of early experiences. Ayun. So next, we have comorbidity of anxiety and related disorders. So ngayong Yung ngayong panahon ng pandemic, maybe you guys are familiar or he- hearing the word comorbidity, di ba? Ito yung ano, mga, isa sa mga inuna ng vaccine. Uh, comorbidity is the co-occurrence of two or more disorders in a single individual. So, example ng comorbidity, tao na may comorbidity is meron siyang uh, diabetic siya, tapos high blood pa, ganun. Yung naandami ng sakit. Ayun. So, the high rates of comorbidity among anxiety and related disorders and depression emphasize how all of these disorders share the common features of anxiety and panic described here. They also share the same vulnerabilities, biological and psychological, to develop anxiety and panic Ayan. Pag nagdo-doble-doble na talaga yung sakit mo, 
mas parang lalo na yung mga yung mga senior na ganun parang if meron na talaga silang comorbidity like the high, higher yung chances nila of anxiety parang and panic attacks also so for the next we have the comorbidity and physical uh, with physical disorders so an important study indicated that the presence of an, any anxiety disorder was uniquely and significantly associated with thyroid disease respiratory disease gastrointestinal disease arthritis migraine headaches and allergic conditions Ayun, so, parang, yeah, maybe, I, parang mas nag-trigger. I have, I have GERD kasi. So, parang pasok siya sa gastrointestinal disease. Um, or any, parang sa stomach. Parang, sabi kasi, sabi kasi, uh, mas nag-trigger daw yung anxiety ko because of my GERD. Kasi sometimes the acid comes up to my chest, tapos hindi na ako nakakahinga, kasi natatrap nga yung hangin, the, the more na nag, 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 nagiging anxious ako, and then it leads to to panic attacks. So, ayun, nagdoble-doble na siya. Parang hindi naman siya parang pasok sa comorbidity, pero ano, kaya pala. Na, uh, I've also learned about that mga earlier lang ba? Parang, oh, I mean, lately lang. So, ayun. Thus, people with these physical conditions are likely to have an anxiety disorder, but are not more likely to have another physiological, I, I mean, psychological disorder. Ayun. Next, suicide. Oh my God. Ayun na. Based on a epidemiological data Wiseman and his colleagues found that 20% of patients with panic disorder had attempted suicide oh no they concluded that such attempts were associated with panic disorder they also concluded that the risk of someone with panic disorder attempting suicide is incomparable to to that for individuals with major depression so this finding was alarming because panic disorder is quite prevalent and clin clinic <coughs> clinicians had uh, generally not been on the lookout for possible suicide attempts in such patients the investigators also found that even patients with panic disorder who did not have accompanying depression were at risk for suicide. So, uh, all my life, parang, ang alam ko na nag, 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 susu, uh, nag suicide talaga na, na ano, is from depression. Mostly kasi yun yung sinasabi ng mga tao like from the news na recently may nag-suicide. It's because of depression. Yun pala, maybe dahil sa panic disorder din siya. And uh, mostly ngayon dito sa Leyte or Samar or anywhere else in the Philippines, may mga students na at at the young age is parang like 16, 17. They parang na siguro sa pre, eh, sinasabi kasi nila ano is nagpapakamatay daw dahil sa modules, dahil sa studies, ganun. Maybe it's not because of depression. Maybe because nagpapanic sila, panic disorder. They have, they have, ano, they are having problems with their modules or they are having problems with their internet so yun may tendency talaga na magpapanic sila and leads to panic disorder and here we are isa din pala sa cause ng suicide is panic disorder so ayun next anxiety disorders 
Disorders traditionally group together as anxiety. Disorders include generalized anxiety disorder, panic disorder, and agoraphobia, a specific phobia, and social dis social anxiety disorder, as well as two new disorders, separation anxiety and selective mutism. These specific anxiety disorders are complicated by panic attacks or other features that are the focus of the anxiety. But in generalized anxiety disorder, for our next, I don't know, the focus is generalized to the events of everyday life. Therefore, we consider generalized anxiety disorder first. So, we have here the general anxiety disorder. What? Where is it? Okay, nawala yung slide. I'm sorry. So, for generalized anxiety disorder, we have Irene's case. So, I will read it na lang ba? Uh, okay, I will read it. Irene was a 20-year-old college with an engaging personality but not many friends. She came to the clinic complaining of excessive anxiety and general difficulties in controlling her life. Everything was catastrophe for Irene. Although she carried a 3.7 grade point average, she was convinced she would flunk every test she took. As a result, she repeatedly threatened to drop courses after only several weeks of classes because she feared that she would not understand the material. Irene worried until she dropped out of the first college she attended after one month. She felt depressed for a while then decided to take a couple of courses at the local junior college, believing she could handle the work there better. After achieving straight A's at the junior college for two years, she enrolled once again in a four-year college as a junior. After a short time, she began calling the clinic in a state of extreme agitation, saying she had to drop this or that course because she couldn't handle it. With great difficulty, her, te her therapist and parents persuaded her to stay in the courses to stay in the courses and to seek further help in any course Irene completed her grade was between an A and a B minus but she still worried about every test and every paper afraid she would fall apart and be able to understand and complete the work Irene did not worry only about school she also concerned about relationships with her friends whenever she was with her boyfriend and she feared making fool of herself and losing interest so ang dami ang dami niyang na experience dito so you guys can read it man you can pause the video so the clinical description of her uh of her situation uh Irene had general anxiety a generalized anxiety disorder so she, su she suffered from from it god is god is generalized anxiety disorder so which is in many ways the basic syndrome that characterized character, characterizes every anxiety and related disorder considered the physical symptoms associated with generalized anxiety and GAD differ somewhat from those associated with panic attacks and panic disorder. So, next, uh, we have here the st statistics. GAD is a prevalent among older adults. Uh, is prevalent among older adults. And GAD was found to be most common in the group over 45 years of age and at least common in the youngest group ages 15 to 24. Um, Wichen, Byers, 
Yaffe, Kavinsky, and Friedman, or Friedman, and Bruce reported prevalence rates of God in older adults were as high as 10%. So, what are the causes of God? So, we have learned a great deal in the past several years as with most anxiety disorders, this seems to be a generalized biological vulner vulnerability. This is reflected in studies examining a genetic contribution to God, although Kendler and colleagues confirmed that what seems to be inherited is the tendency to become anxious rather than God itself. Several studies have found that individuals with God show less responsiveness on most physiological measures such as heart rate, blood pressure, skin conductance, and respiration rate than do individuals with other anxiety disorders. They showed intense cognitive processing in the frontal lobes as indicated by EEG, uh, activity, particularly in the left hemisphere. So, ayun. This finding would suggest frantic, intense thought processes or worry without a accompanying message yeah, images. Ayan. So, what is the treatment? Uh, God is quite common and available to treatments both drug and psychological and reasonably effective uh, we have here benzodiazepines are most often prescribed for generalized anxiety and the evidence indicates that they give some relief at least in a short term i heard these benzos are really addictive na uh, people in the U.S. parang ano kahit hindi na prescribe tung benzo parang they ano ask for more kasi ngayon nga addictive siya but therapeutic effect is relatively modest furthermore benzos carry some risks first they seem to impair both cognitive and motor functioning. Ah, uh, yun. Okay. Specifically, people don't seem to be as alert on the job or at school when they are talking, uh, when they are taking benzos. The drugs may impair driving also. And in old, older adults, they seem to be associated with falls, resulting in hip fractures. So, ayun, meron pala siyang, ano, nakakalokang, uh, nakakalokang side effects. So, we have here the next, panic disorder and agoraphobia. Um, panic disorder or PD in which individuals experience severe unexpected panic attack. Agoraphobia is fear and avoidance of situations in which a person feels unsafe or unable to escape to get home or to a hospital in the event of developing panic symptoms or other physical symptoms such as loss of bladder control so uh, people develop agoraphobia because they never know when these symptoms might occur in severe cases people with agoraphobia are unable to leave the house sometimes for years on end as in for example we have mrs m Mrs. M was a 67-year-old, was 67 years old, and lived in a second-floor walk apartment in a lower-middle-class section of the city. Her adult doc uh, a daughter, one of her few remaining contacts with the world, had requested an evaluation with Mrs. M's 
consent. I rang the bell and entered a narrow hallway. Mrs. M was nowhere in sight. Knowing that she lived on the second floor, I walked up the stairs and knocked on the door at the top. When I heard Mrs. M ask me to come in, I opened the door. She was sitting in her living room and I could quickly see the layout of the rest of the apartment. The living room was in, was in the front, the kitchen was in the back, adjoining a porch. To the right of the stairs was the one bedroom with the bathroom opening from it. Mrs. M was glad to see me and seemed very friendly, offering me a coffee and homemade cookies. I was the first person she had seen in three weeks. Mrs. M had not left that apartment in 20 years. And she had suffered from panic disorder and agoraphobia for more than 30 years. As she told her story, Mrs. M conveyed vivid images of a wasted life. And yet, she continued to struggle in the face of adversity and to make the best she could of her limited existence. Even areas in her apartment signaled the potential for terrifying panic attacks. She had not answered the door herself for the past 15 years because she was afraid to look into the hallway. She could enter her kitchen and go into the areas containing the stove and refrigerator, but for the past 10 years, she had not been to the part of the room that overlooked the backyard or out onto the back porch. Thus, her life for the past decade had been confined to her bedroom, her living room, and the front half of her kitchen. She relied on her daughter to bring groceries and visit once a week. Her only vi other visitor was the parish priest who came to deliver communion every two to three weeks when, she, when he could. Her only other contact was with the outside world. Her only other contact with the outside world was through the, the television and the radio. Her husband, who had abused both alcohol and Mrs. M, had died 10 years earlier of the alcohol-related causes. Early in her stressful marriage, she had her first terrifying panic attack and had gradually withdrawn from the world. As long as she stayed in her apartment, she was relatively free of panic, therefore, and because in her mind there were few reasons left near the end of her life to venture out, she declined treatment. So, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Ang hirap. For 30 years, you have enclosed yourself only in in parts of your apartment pili pa so clinical description in dsm4 panic uh panic disorder and agoraphobia were integrated into one disorder called panic disorder with agoraphobia in in panic disorder uh, anxiety and panic are combined in an intricate relationship that can become as devastating as it is as it was for Mrs. M. Most, most patients with panic disorder and agoraphobia avoidance also display another cluster of avoidant behaviors that we call interoceptive avoidance or avoidance of internal physical sensations. So, in... These behaviors involve removing oneself from situations or activities that might produce the physiological arousal that somehow resembles the beginnings of a panic attack. So, statistics. PD is fairly common. Approximately 2.7% of the population meet criteria for PD during a given one-year period and 4.7 met 4.7% met them at some point during their lives. Two-thirds of them are women. So, ayun. 75, most 75 or more of those who suffer from agoraphobia are women. 
Yes, they are. Uh, we have here cultural influences. Uh, susto, a disorder that is characterized by sweating, increased heart rate, and insomnia, but not by reports of anxiety or fear, even though a severe fright is the cause. So, it's a Latin word. In uh, I mean, ayun, it's from Latin America, new word. So, we have Attacks the nervios, an anxiety-related culturally defined syndrome prominent among Hispanic Americans, particularly those from the Caribbean. The symptoms, oh, yeah. the symptoms of an attack seem quite similar, similar to those of a panic attack. Although such uh, uh, such manifest ma manifestations as shouting uncontrollably or bursting into tears may be associated more often with attack than with panic. Attack de nervios. Wow. So we have here nocturnal panic. Nocturnal attacks are studied in sleep laboratory. Patients spend a few nights sleeping while attached to an ele electroencephalograph machine that monitors their brain waves. <clears throat> uh, in fact, panic attacks pala daw occur uh, uh, occur more often between one third. Oh, wait, no. Think back to the case of Gretchen, sorry, whose panic attack was described earlier. This is there anything unusual about her report? Yeah, uh, do you guys remember about Gretchen? So, ayun, she uh, wait. 